Hello, welcome back to the Joy of Code. This is Michael again. Um, and we will continue with the turtle scenario for a little bit. I was wondering actually whether it's time to move on and, and start with a new game. But I've decided we do maybe a couple more things uh, with this scenario before we go on. And this time again I will go really quickly through the material first and then do it again slowly. So what we want to do today is to look at variables for counting. I want to count when the uh, turtle runs, how many lettuces it has eaten, and when it has managed to eat 10, the game is won and should stop with a winning sound. Okay, let's do that. So, oops, that was the wrong one. I opened the snake. I meant to open the turtle. So here's the turtle class, and I will introduce a variable that looks like this. Um, let us eat Okay, so I copy this and every time I eat a lettuce I increment it and then I say if I have eaten 10 of them then it's game over. Okay, and game over is a new method that I haven't got yet. Uh, one this. So here I'm putting a new method in that I call game over. And there I say greenfoot.play sound and I've made a new sound for it called fanfare.wave and I say greenfoot dot and I hit control space uh, stop it's called greenfoot called stop. Okay, that's it. So I've introduced a variable. I count it up. When I eat lettuce and when I have 10 lettuces, it's game over. Let's try that out. Oops, and there is an error. It says cannot find symbol method game over. Maybe you, aha, uh -huh. there's a spelling error. Here I've spelled it properly. There, I haven't. Okay, fix that, compile again, and try it out. Now let's see. We can count how many we've eaten. Ah, almost. Snake almost got me. How many more do we need? And there we go. That's it. Okay. And now, if you understand this all already, goodbye. Move on to the next episode. And otherwise, now we rewind and do it all again slowly. Okay. So we are back to where we started. Um, not having our variable in the code yet. So. Um, I will do the same thing again, a bit more slowly with a bit more explanation. Um, so you have seen that what we want to achieve is counting the lettuces and what we use is a variable. A variable um, is a bit of storage space inside an object, so you can add variable to any of the classes which would add the storage to that class's object. So in this case I'm working on the class turtle, so I'm adding storage space to the turtle object. We can already inspect the turtle and see what variables already exist. So if I inspect this, I can see that the turtle already stores its x coordinate, its y coordinate, its current rotation, and it has what's called references, as pointers to the world and its image. So it knows the world it's in, it's no, it has an image. Um, it has these variables already because a turtle is an animal and an animal is an actor. So a turtle um, also has all the variables from animal and actor um, because a turtle is an actor it has all the attributes that an actor has and actor actually has those variables that we've just seen so all the subclasses of actor will have those variables but we can now add our own variables with every variable we're adding we're adding a little bit of storage space in this turtle that the turtle can then use 
to store some information. We um, add this variable at the beginning of the class before the act method. Java has different kinds of variables. The ones we're looking at first here, Java calls fields. A field is a variable that belongs to an object, as I've just explained. We write it in the following way. First comes the word private, and I will um, a bit later explain in more detail the difference between private and public. Um, that is always the two choices. Every element, that is every variable or every method can be private or public and I will talk about that a bit later. But first of all, as a fairly hard rule, fields we make always private. So we write private int lettuce eaten. Um, the syntax is this. First the word private, always. Then the type of information we want to store. In this case I want to store a number. I want to count how many um, bits of lettuce I have eaten. So um, the type for numbers is int. Int, as we've encountered before, is stands for whole number. So that means that in this variable I can store numbers. I can declare different variables, for example to store text or to store boolean values or to store references to other objects. We will very soon see those as well. But this is the first one we will look at. And then and next comes a name for the variable and that name you can choose uh, and you can give it any name of your choice. You should always name it in a way that the name makes very clear what this variable is being used for. And here because I want to count how many lettuces I've eaten, that's what I call it. There are some restrictions to names of variables and by the way also names of methods and classes in Java. Um, certain punctuation characters are not allowed. They can also not include a space. That's why if I have these compound identifiers that actually is two, letter, two words, lettuce and eaten, the convention is then just to stick a capital in the middle where the second word starts because I'm not allowed to have a space. Okay, this is already enough to actually create the variable. You can see that if you now compile it and then you inspect the turtle, you will see that here now it has an additional field which is lettuce eaten. And the definition here is exactly like we have written it. Every turtle will have this field. Um, so if I create a different turtle and I oops, put it in here and I inspect this one, I see that also has this field. So every turtle that we create will have this field and we see it also has a value. The value um, gets automatically initialized. If I declare a variable and I do not give it a value, it will get a default value automatically if it is a field. Um, and for ints the default value is zero. I can also optionally initialize this, which means I can store a value in it. So if I say I want to start off with 42, for example, that's I want a variable a new variable and I want to store 40, the number 42 in that variable to start with. We can do that. So if I compile this and I inspect my turtle, I can see there's now my variable and it has 42 stored in it. So I can optionally initialize it by writing an equal symbol, which is an assignment symbol, and the number I want to start off with. In my case, actually, I want to start off with zero um, and because at the moment when the turtle, when the game starts, we have eaten zero lettuces. Um, and as you will notice, the default value was also zero. So actually initializing it explicitly to zero uh, is strictly speaking not necessary. I'll do that anyway because it is good style to always initialize variables to make clear that it is our intention that this should contain zero. Okay, so I now have a variable that I can use to count. Now I just have to do the counting. Um, so I go to the point where I know that I'm actually eating a lettuce, that I have actually found it. Here is where we're looking for lettuce, here we're checking whether we can see one. And once we get into the body of this if statement here, then we know we actually found a lettuce and, and we are eating it. So here we're doing the eating of the lettuce and there we can do the counting. And there I write the name of my variable and then in Java has a plus plus operator. If you write plus plus behind 
a variable name, it will increment that variable value by one. So that will count up by one every time um, that statement is executed and that is every time a lettuce is eaten. And then as at the end of every instruction is a semicolon. So this one should count up. We can also investigate this. So the variable should now count up every time. Let me just inspect this again and put my inspector window over here. So here's the lettuce eaten is zero at the moment. And now we can observe the zero here. Keep your eye on the zero while this is running. And I try to eat a lettuce here. And we see every time I eat one, this actually is counting up. So now my variable is counting how many lettuces I've eaten. OK, so I am counting now. The last thing I need to do is to actually do something when I reach my target. Let's say the goal here is to eat 10 lettuces. And if you manage to do that without being eaten by a snake, then you win. Um, then here, um, after eating the lettuce, I just check whether I am up to 10 yet. So I use an if statement again. I say if lettuce eaten, I'm checking whether my variable contains the value 10 equals 10. And here is a, um, a little detail that's very important. I want to check whether my lettuce eaten variable contains the number 10, whether it is equal to 10. An equality check in Java is written with a double equal symbol, not a single equal symbol. You have to write a double equal symbol. A single equal symbol actually has a different meaning. It's an assignment, and we will see that very shortly. Um, so when you want to compare two things, like my variable to the number 10, the equality operator is a double equal symbol. So if lettuce eaten is 10, which means I have eaten 10 lettuces, then I want to stop the game. So I write um, green foot dot stop, which will stop the game. But I also want to make a sort of winning sound. And you can look at the file system here. I have put a couple new sounds in my sounds folder. I've got a new sound fanfare and another game over sound actually that I've added here. So I want to use that fanfare sound for winning the game. So I put in here the fanfare when I actually win. And maybe actually I want to do the slurp sound first. So um, I want to maybe move that slurp up there. So if I eat the lettuce, I slurp. And then if I'm up to 10, then I'm also playing the fanfare and the stop. And I stop the game. Um, oh, actually, I just realized from before, I had put this if statement, uh, th this playing the fanfare and stopping in a separate method in the first run through. That is actually, and I've, I've put that in a method called game over, which I left here um, from my first run through. That is actually better style. So I should probably replace this here by just writing game over. And there's a spelling error, which will then at this point call that method down here. And in fact, do the exact same things as I just written here, but now what what happens when it's game over is actually in a separate method and that is better style because I'm separating out my problems so that my try to eat lettuce method does not also do the game over thing. It just deals with the lettuce eating and if it decides that it's game over it farms that functionality out to a different method and I can deal with that at a different place. That is a bit better. Okay, let's try that out. And now one, two, three, I need... Oh no! Oh. Actually, it would be nice if it would also stop here now when we lose the game. But first I want to test my winning. Let's see that I can get 10 without being eaten. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ah, ah. And there we are. Well, let's just fix the last thing that also the game stops when 
um, we lose the game and that is when the snake, now I went to the snake class, when the snake eats the turtle um, then we also want to stop greenfoot dot stop put that in here as well and as I as you may have noticed I have a new game over sound as well um, so try that out and now if I get eaten the game stops and I've got my game over sound and uh, that's the game losing sound and the fanfare is my game winning sound okay that was the first look at variables in this case we have used an int field and we have used it to count the letters and then do something when we reached a certain value okay see you next time bye bye